Hey everybody, Hogan Brown with Loon Outdoors here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to tie a fairly new topwater pattern. We were lucky enough to spend some time out with a, a really great fly tire in North Alabama called Adam Hudson, and uh, he had tied some streamers. We watched him, did some tying videos with him, and watched him tie some flies with streamers with little wiggle tails like this fly and I thought man that'd be a great addition to a topwater pattern in that you know one of the big things about topwater flies is obviously the noise it makes or the the front end of the fly but you know it's what that fly kind of does and looks like when it's not moving that's important as well and so adding a little shank out the back with the tail gives it a little wiggle and kind of slide and just kind of creates a different track as that fly moves through the water. You'll get a little bit of side to side out of it almost. And that's a really important movement for bass, that side to side. If anybody's ever fished a Zara spook or a pole dance or anything like that, they know that that is an important part. And uh, totally took this idea from Adam and added it to just a real simple topwater pattern. And it's paid dividends for me this summer, put some nice fish in the boat. So I'm gonna show you how to tie this one, stay tuned. So the first part of this fly, we're gonna tie the tail. Okay, and we're just gonna start with a basic, I use a uh, fish skull, 20 millimeter articulated shank. And I'm gonna use black, really any thread you want. Um, I like to use GSP, this is a 70, uh, 75. And just lay a nice base. And basically what we're doing is we're uh, tying this so that it, basically wiggles, it's gonna be the tail, wiggles off the back of the fly. Gives that tail a little wiggle. This is a technique or kind of a, the way I saw it is I, I saw a guy by the name of Adam Hudson of Blue Line Flies do this with some of his streamers and he probably even does it with some of his top water but I thought it was a great idea. So I'm just gonna take a piece of 20 pound mono and tie this in right to the top. And this is gonna be our junction to the hook. And there's no, this is, no fish is gonna eat or really put any weight on this. So it's not a, a weight bearing junction as I think of when I talk about, you know, articulated type of stuff. It's just gotta hang out the back and kinda wiggle and look, look enticing. So, Next, I'm gonna take Flashaboo, Fire Tiger Flashaboo, okay? It's a 6943, if you wanna know the numbers, but it is basic Fire Tiger. And I usually take a eh, good little pinch. Fold it over. And Give it a nice little tail. Let's see. Make sure not to clip the twenty pound. You got your tail. Next thing, I'm just going to take a uh, rooster neck, some chartreuse, and just take a couple feathers, kind of standard popper feathers. And again, I am by no means an expert bass popper tire. I tend to think how you move the fly and where you're able to present it with regards to a lot of poppers is probably more important than the fly. But I'll take two, match them up tip to tip, kind of peel back the shank, the stem, and use that natural bend to just sit on the side of that hook shank. Kind of give it, if you want, traditional frog legs or whatever. 
and I like to angle them a little down. Okay, if you notice, they're not gonna be perfectly set on the side. I like that angle a little down. Give it a little bit of a paddle. Take the next two. Kind of make sure they're the same length. Do the same thing on this side. Trim that off. Then I'm going to take some bigger feathers from the bottom of the neck. Pull those off. Two to three. Pull them. Take the tips. Pull those fibers back. Take those right there. Tie them in. Take this. And give it a nice palmer. Pulling those feathers out as you do it. Make sure those legs stay where you want. Trim those, tie them off, trim them, and then kind of clean it up, pin them back. Give that a good latching. And again, like most bass flies, you can use really any color or any mix and match that you may like. Then if you want to kind of clean it up, clean it up. I always tell you uh, when I'm tying flies and you, know, you start trimming the little hairs and laying the thread wraps perfect, I always like to think if, if it really comes down to that being the reason a fish doesn't eat my fly, I've done so much right that I can accept that. <laughs> then I will tie that off. Then spin it over, take my bodkin, put a little bit of clear, clear heavy on there and just kind of paste it on to kind of seal that thread wrap. Sometimes with finer application, I like to not use the nozzle, but use the bodkin. Not that a bass fly is fine application, but keeps it a little cleaner, I think. Hit it with the UV light. And there you go. All right, so next for the, the business end of this fly, I'm gonna take an Airx SA2020. Okay, this is a basic streamer hook. It's a one-aught could use any bass hook probably that you wanted, but uh, I like this hook. It's got a big eye, nice stiff shank. Start a thread wrap right down the shank. Then take that tail you just tied, set that mono right on top, and attach it. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna use the Rainey's PSP Popper Diver. This is a jumbo, but really any head that you wanna use, you can. And I always kinda set it on there to get my proportions. And so what I'll do is I'll eyeball it about where I want it. And then I'll move the thread to about where that body is gonna be, okay? So obviously the body is gonna take a fair amount of that up. And there's a couple different things you can do at this point. You can add another set of legs if you wanna give it kind of that extended look, give it a thin kind of look. You can add some marabou around here to give it more of a bulk and push across. But to simplify it and kind of keep it in consistent form, I'm gonna show you just basic add some marabou in, just to give it a little kind of cover over, okay? So I'm gonna take this jailbird, commonly referred to as jailbird marabou. Basically it's chartreuse with black lines on it. And take two feathers Try to find equal ones, just makes the palmering a little easier. Equal length, that is. So I find two that are about the same length. Find the tip on each one, which right up there. Take it, tie the tip, first tip in. Pull it forward a little bit, make sure it doesn't catch the other tips. Okay. Then I'm going to take the next one. Tie that in. Okay. Now with these guys, I'm gonna grab them delicately because you don't want to break them and start palmering them to get that nice buggy flow over the juncture. Always, if you see what I'm doing here, is pulling those fibers out so that they come back and flow back. So I'm making sure not to pin them down with the wraps. it and then feed that thread through there wrap it pull it I'm going to take my precision prime scissors which are a much bigger scissor trim that and then the beauty of a bass fly is it doesn't really we're not working on beauty here we're working on functionality so I'm just going to take all of that and pin it back. It's going to come right over that little wiggle tail. Okay, then a couple things you can do. If you want to put some rubber legs in your head, uh, we can do that. But for simplicity's sake, I'm going to just put this thing on and then I'll thread some rubber legs through it once it's on there. But I, I have a variety of ways that I use poppers. But for this, what I'm going to do, there's a pre kind of sunk hole and a pre sunk hole there. I'm going to cut it with these precision prime scissors right down the middle like that. Okay. Open that up. Okay. And then I'm going to take the back here. And I'm going to make two angled cuts. Okay, basically cut a triangle out 
each side. And this is going to help accommodate this bulge right here. Okay. Then take this. And tie it off. For security, just a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of super glue right on the top. A little bit of security, just add a little dab of super glue right on the top. Use the super glue because as we put this over our resin, we're going to use resin, but we need to have the light. Okay. That. Then what I like to do is I put a little bead of heavy in there. Just to secure that. There you go. If you notice, one thing I always do with my bass poppers is I angle that popper down. Okay? I angle it a little bit like this so that as it pushes, this force of the water forces it to kick up, and then as it sits, it's going to sit a little bit like this, just kind of bottom down, just like a frog. So you can add rubber legs to this, you know, with a basic rubber leg tool. You can poke them through there. You can add some more streamer fibers out the side for a second set of legs. There's a lot of variability here with this fly. Like most good bass patterns, you can mine and make it your own, but. Really the cool thing that I like about this, and it's definitely something I took from a, another fly tire, like most great ideas, is just this kind of wiggle tail out the back. The idea that the back side of that fly is going to kind of wiggle and move as I move it through the water. So tie a few of these up. Go hit your uh, favorite pond, lake. Get out on the water this summer and throw some top water for bass in the evening. I'm Hogan from Loon Outdoors, and have a great day.